Greetings, Linworth United Methodist Church community friends. I'm um, excited to join you on this Wednesday for our overflow. And as you know, we are continuing to go with the Vacation Bible School theme about how Jesus's power pulls us through with the, the Rocky Railroad um, imagery. And um, our verse for today is Isaiah 40, 29, which would be God gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. And the statement would be, Jesus' power helped them be bold. And if we were all together, I'd ask you to go, trust Jesus, because that's the response to that um, Vacation Bible School statement. The story that we'd be spending time with, or I want to share with you today, is from Acts 3. So I'm just going to read the scripture for you. Acts 3, 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms for those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from him, them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. I invite you to re reflect on that story for a moment and enjoy this offering of music.
I love this story in Acts 3. Preached on it recently at my previous appointment, and it feels like a story of spontaneity. It's the story of a day disrupted, which I can relate to. It's a story of some sidetracked plans where the disciples choose to respond with a witness of grace and bold prayer. So many of our plans have been interrupted in 2020. I saw some people posting online the other day that at the beginning of the year they had these brand new sparkly planners that they were excited to fill in. People, a lot of people get those as Christmas gifts, these special planners. And they were kind of lamenting how those planners that were filled up at the beginning of this year with events and hopes are now kind of these planners that are just reminders of interrupted hopes. But I'm convinced that God's in our perceived interruptions. Now I'm not saying that God causes all the interruptions, but I know that God is with us in every interruption. God encourages and inspires us to, to boldly respond to interruptions with the love, power, and peace of Jesus Christ. What if we reframe our interruptions as divine detours that remind us that God is with us and redirect us to trust Jesus all the time in all the places. As followers of Jesus, we are disciples who will frequently need to decide how we'll respond to perceived inconveniences and interruptions. And in this story, in Acts 3, it can teach us how, can, how uh, we can lovingly and faithfully respond to these kind of detours or disruptions. So let me offer a quick recap. We read here that Peter and John are on the move. They're on their way to the temple for prayer, but their journey is interrupted. And around this interruption is a bold healing ministry that kind of begins it spontaneously erupts outside of the temple. And I actually think there were interruptions even before this disruption because back in verse two, we, we first meet this man being carried by some people to the temple gate. This is an unnamed man and li with limited and some physical capabilities, but he has a community who cares. And God is at work in the community. This man has people willing to carry him to the temple gate called Beautiful. And sadly, this man's left unnamed in scripture. He's just referred to as the beggar. But I believe it's important to spend time with the unnamed biblical characters because we can often maybe see ourselves in their stories or learn things or have God revealed through these unnamed character stories. And when we have empathy for the unnamed characters in scripture, we're reminded that God's grace is at work in every person's story. And we're reminded to pay attention so our unnamed beggar friend saw Peter and John on their way into the temple and he asked them for money. He interrupted their journey to share his need. Now the NRSV says Peter and John looked at him intently and that feels bold and specific because let's be honest, sometimes when someone's in need, sometimes people avoid eye contact, they, they look away. But Peter and John looked intently at this beloved child of God and made a beautiful connection in the interruption. And then in response, the beggar fixed his attention on the disciples and that's a substantial gift too. Boldly fixing, that language fixed his attention, fixing our undivided attention on one another is a gift. Friends, I believe this beggar teaches us something here when he responds to Peter and fixes his attention on the disciples. He convicts us to pay attention to God's work around us. This is how we discover and acknowledge the God sightings that we've talked about. VBS highlights those. Where do you see a God sighting? Where's God at work around you? The story reminds me that God's at work in the interruptions, at work in the community, at work in the ordinary and at work in the unique circumstances. The beggar teaches us to look up, to pay attention, and to expect that God's at work. But I also love how this story goes beyond expectation. It surpasses any expectation. Peter says to our unnamed beggar friend, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. 
there's that bold action in prayer. Now, if we're all together in VBS, I would say, there's the Bible point. Jesus' power helped them be bold. And then I'd wait for United Young Voices to shout out, trust Jesus. I'd be this way, trust Jesus, right? And then Peter, in this story, Peter took the beggar by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. He was jumping up. He stood up and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God. I love our beggar friend's response. He jumped up and walked. He didn't refuse Peter's hand. He didn't resist. He jumped up and he began to walk. And then he went with the disciples into the temple courts. And then he kept on walking and leaping and praising God. We don't really know how many people would have been touched by what they saw. Think of jumping and what a bold movement that is. Think of jumping spiritually and socially or metaphorically and consider what may be holding you back from boldly jumping into places where God may be calling you. What are our places of hesitation or resistance? Are we worrying into the future or hanging on to the past? How can we be a little more like the beggar and jump up? and walk in faith, leaping and praising God. Praising God for who God is as creator and redeemer and sustainer. Friends, there is freedom in the beggar's response and his reactions led to hope for others because other people see how he was transformed. They saw healing and bold action. The community around them noticed the transformation and they were filled with wonder and amazement. Friends, Know that you are loved by our God who is active in our calm and constant places and who is equally active in our difficult and disrupted places. Be encouraged and know that God's grace will provide for us to be bold as disciples of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your ongoing, constant, loving presence. Thank you for disrupting our journey or being there in the disruptions. Thank you for reminding us that we are never alone. Jesus, help us be bold, boldly compassionate, boldly kind, boldly willing to interrupt injustice and illness with your love and your healing. By your spirit, strengthen our faith, surround us in your peace that passes understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, this song is all about God's power, and it's called the Power Shuffle. Make strong muscle arms for power. Yeah, just like that. So it starts like this. You're going to kind of sweep out to the side. I feel it in the air right now, and you're going to look. It's all around. I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, God's power. And then we do it again. It's the power to move. You're going to make star hands reaching out. Any star, it's the power to heal. Make a heart with your hands like that. It's a little tricky. It's a broken heart. You can break your little heart. It's the power. Yeah, God's power. Then you're going to put your hands out. So don't hold back. Then to the side. Don't hold still. Reach your hand down your front because God is here and he is real. And then the rest of the song will tell you exactly what to do.
everybody clap your hands. Now stop. I feel it in the air right now. It's all around, I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, God's power. It's the power to move and it starts. It's the power to heal your broken heart. It's the power. Everybody clap your hands. Now stop.